Hi, this is Dr. J. Smith. No longer in America or in Africa for that matter. I'm actually in Hong Kong. Uh, this is one of the main streets of Hong Kong. I have just been up on the ladder, so my voice is almost completely gone. If you look over here, you can see where we did the open air for the Christians. Those are our two posters there. Then if you look further down, over there, you can see where the Muslims are with their banners. Further on where those trees are is where the main mosque is here in Hong Kong. And I want to talk about what's been happening this weekend. Today, Saturday, we're supposed to have a debate on the Quran. That's what that poster there is advertising. Ijaz Ahmed from Trinidad, who challenged me to a debate on the Quran earlier this spring, was going to fly over and do the debate tonight. When he heard it was only on the Quran and not on the Bible versus the Quran, they canceled the debate. They did not want to do this debate. So we said, okay, fine. We can understand why you don't want to do the Quran, even though that's what Ijaz challenged me to do this spring. We've already had a debate on the Bible. George Husney came and did that in March of this year, only on the Bible. So now it's the time for the Quran to be questioned. So we decided, okay, we're going to have these meetings that are advertised there. One at City University here in Hong Kong yesterday, last night. We had it all planned. The advertisements were sent out. The flyers were sent out. And then we got this. This is what the Muslims put up. And what the Muslims have said here, Jay Smith, a Christian evangelist, is coming to Hong Kong, again with one aim, to badmouth and spread lies about Islam whilst provoking and inciting Muslim sentiments and feelings. And then it says, O Muslims, in red, please do not attend nor share this event. This man is a known liar, hateful preacher, and highly disrespectful towards Islam. Best to boycott the likes of him with the band sign. And you notice they put two band signs over the locations so no Muslim could know where these meetings were going to be held. It's obvious that they were scared about these meetings. Now the man who made this poster, he's right there in the distance. We've already gone and talked to him and he would not explain why he did this, why he was so fearful of these talks and why he did not want any Muslims. As I was just talking to him about a half an hour ago, he started singing over top of me and trying to make sure that he would not look at me. It was obvious that he is scared of these kind of talks. But that's not all. The talk that was supposed to have been at City University, we were then told was banned. The Muslims had gone to the administration of City University and said, this is not good to have religious talks on university campuses. And more than that, a talk like this would never ever take place in America. Lying both ways. If you're not gonna talk about the historical problems with the Quran, if you're not gonna talk about the manuscript difficulties with the Quran on a university campus, where else would you wanna talk about this? Everything that I did last night in the talk was concerning source criticism, redacted criticism, literary criticism, historical criticism, the very same criticisms that have been applied to the Bible, which we allow anybody to do against the Bible. We have never banned anybody from asking these critical questions. The reason why is the, battle, the Bible stands up to every criticism. It's obvious the, the Quran does not. They not only banned us from doing this on the university, they wouldn't let any Muslims even come to the meetings we had outside of the university. We have one more meeting to do tomorrow. Hopefully, hopefully, some Muslims will come, but I doubt it. We filled out the hall last night. Only two Muslims came. And they were quite upset about the banning themselves. They were embarrassed that these bannings were there. And this says something about the leadership of the Muslims here in Hong Kong. They are fearful of any questions against the Quran. But you need to see 
why they are so fearful. And we're going to put up that meeting. You can ban us all you want, but we're st we still filmed it nonetheless. And that film is now going to be put up on YouTube. You're going to be able to see what we introduced, 11 areas of historical problems with the Quran. That's all going up on the internet on Fander Films for all of you. And I hope many of you are Muslims who are watching this. Listen, this is Jay here in Hong Kong. I really had hoped to do a debate tonight with Ijaz Ahmed. He has run away. I had really hoped to do a talk last night at the City University, the Muslims banned it. We have one more chance to do it tomorrow afternoon. We'll have to go and do it in a church because no other place will Muslims allow us to do it, even in Hong Kong, even in Hong Kong, showing how fearful Muslims are of having their Quran questioned, critiqued which is what every book from every religion needs to do. The Bible's already done it. It's passed its test. I guess you know which is the better, the bigger book. God bless you. This is Jay here in Hong Kong, over and out. Hello, I'd like to do a quick addendum concerning that video you just saw, which happened, took place on the 24th of November. 2018. We're now a few months later. Uh, we're in February of 2019. A few minutes after that video, after I'd recorded that video, a what we think was a Pakistani gentleman, maybe in his 30s, early 40s, was walking by and stopped to talk to some of the people on our team. They kept them introduced him to me to talk to me and and I mentioned to him in the course of our conversation that we were going to unpack the Quran historically and using academic forensic evidence. Uh, and he was curious about it. And so I took out my phone, in fact, the very phone that I'm using right now to record this video. And I showed him the poster that the Muslims had banned us from the university and had banned all Muslims from coming to hear us talk. And I said, but you're more than welcome because we were going to, since we had been banned from the university, we not only did a, a talk at... Uh, a church, Lutheran church the day before, but the next day, Sunday, we're going to go to the Hong Kong side and do this talk once more uh, in the largest church in Hong Kong. And he was more than welcome to come. After, when I talked about the banning, he got quite upset and he says, no, no, we don't ban. That's not such a thing. You're just making this up. And I said, no, let me just show you. And I showed him the poster on my phone that I just shown you uh, there on the video. And as he was reading what it was saying there, he just almost uh, like a switch turned on inside him and he just went viral and he started confronting me coming at me i put my hand up to stop him he pushed against my hand and then he started yelling at me saying that i was touching him how dare i touch him and i uh, crowds were stopping to look i realized that this guy needed to calm down i had the ca my camera in my hand that i had just shown him this poster he grabbed the camera from me and he flung it onto the ground, onto the cement, and it went flying in two different directions. I thought for sure this $800 camera had been destroyed. I finally was able to start calling him, calming him down because we're used to this. We get this kind of reaction at Speaker's Corner uh, often, uh, and we, we know not to, uh, in any ways, to respond in kind. Some uh, uh, other Muslims then came and grabbed him and pulled him away. Now, we have all that on video, but I don't want to show it here. It's not important. What was interesting is they pulled him back over to the very table, the book table, where they were handing out Qurans, and he started handing out Qurans. So we think that he was sent by them purposely tried to try to push me to the limit and to try to get me to respond in kind so that they could get me arrested. That is a tactic that has been used in London uh, by Pakistani Muslims. And so it's something that we're we're, we're, we, we are, are used to. The next day then, which is the 25th of November, I did do a talk at the largest church in Hong Kong, and the place was filled, and in, at that talk there were not one Muslim showed up. Unlike the first one where two showed up, none showed up. They obeyed the banning. But there were some professors from Hong Kong University who did show up, and fascinating because that was the same university I had been banned in the year before, in 2017, in October of 2017. You can go see the video up on Fander Film, uh, where we had to then go to a church quickly and do the talk there in the church. This professor, especially one of them, an American who was teaching Hebrew and Greek at Hong Kong University, especially 
stayed around after the talk. He wanted to talk to me afterwards and when he went out for dinner. And at, for about an hour, he was going through all the things he had seen on the slides, especially he was interested in the diacritical differences, which is very similar to what they have in Hebrew, but also the consonantal differences. That's what really intrigued him. And as we were going through it and unpacking it, and now he, he was questioning me and questioning me. About an hour later, he just starts shaking his head. And he says, now I understand why the Muslims are so upset. He says, as a Hebraist, knowing and understanding manuscript evidence, we work with it all the time in Hebrew. He says, I know exactly how damaging this is. This would destroy the Bible if we had these kind of variants. If we had words that are inserted and deleted and whole tapings and coverings over entire sentences, this would destroy any credibility in any archaic manuscript. He says, I can see now why they didn't want this debate, and I can see now why they, they had you banned. And I thanked him for that, and that's curious to me because that shows me that somebody who understands is better than most people, because most people who are listening probably don't understand the enormity of what we're actually unpacking. He did. And that's why it's important that we get this material out and that we try to make Muslims understand we're not just talking about diacritical difference. We're not talking about ahruf in kirat. Uh, that's not what we're dealing. We're talking about complete wholesale changes of the script of entire words and sentences within manuscript after manuscript. We're up to 4,000 of these variants that we've been able to find. al and I are going to be doing more of this. Next month we'll be getting together and we'll be doing some more videos like we did last year in May and in June. You're going to see them because they're all going to go up on Fander Film. And now hopefully when we get together we'll actually show you exactly what these variants look like and why they are so damaged. So hold on, there's still an enormous, an enormous amount of material to unpack. There's some new material that's coming in with from Dr. Mark Dury also that we're going to be introducing in the next few months. A lot to get done, a lot to do, and enormous amount of work that you need to, we need to wade through it, we need to get uh, up online, and we need Muslims to respond to it. Well, this is Jay, now back in the United States, not in Hong Kong anymore. Here, in my office, 